Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen, and welcome to Science Trek 360 degree immersive tour of EBR1. This experimental breeder reactor was one of the world's first electricity generating nuclear power plants. So let's take a tour. This is Don Miley. He's going to be our tour guide here at EBR1. Don, where are we? We are in the control room of EBR1. This is where they started and operated the reactor and did everything they did. Um, so once we get over here, now we're talking radiation readings. They had different monitors throughout the building. So this was to keep an eye on what are the radiation levels. Primary coolant, secondary coolant. Um, the primary is really the one they paid attention to. They had four panels to watch flow rates, temperatures, um, everything they could track about the coolant so they knew how's the reactor operating. And why was EBR1 so significant, historically speaking? Historically speaking, I would say it's because it was the first one. There were all these ideas at the end of World War II in the Manhattan Project that we think we can make electricity with what we've learned. This was the first practical application and it worked beautifully. So where are we now? We are now on top of the reactor and you can see through the plexiglass there is a, a lid there and behind the this is a model of exactly what the core looked like had sub-assemblies with fuel rods inside. That's all the bigger around they were, 10 feet long, with eight and a half inches of fuel in each one, uranium fuel. And it would heat the coolant from 440 degrees Fahrenheit to 600 degrees Fahrenheit at 300 gallons a minute, which we would refer to as energy density. This is very energy dense. So you'd be able to get all that energy from something the size yeah. of a football. From something the size of a football. Would run a generator to to generate the electricity. electricity. And in this case, this reactor, um, with the size of turbine and generator, they could light the building, that was about it. So Don, where are we now? So we're at the turbine generator area. This is where, like any other power plant, where you finally make electricity spinning magnets past copper wires. First time they did that here, they had four 200 watt light bulbs strung up. They lit those light bulbs. First time in the world a reactor made that much electricity. And behind it is one of my favorites, the wall where everybody that was here, excuse me, almost everybody that was here signed their names. The names that are up there, the 18, are all the men that worked here. The men signed because they were project personnel. The, the women were told support personnel, nurse and secretaries, no. However, the bottom name on the left, Jolly, he was the janitor, he signed. So in 94, during National Women's Month, we did hang a plaque because this is a National Historic Landmark. We couldn't let them sign their names. But we did hang a plaque to get their names up on the wall finally. So where are we going now? So this is the hot cell where the used fuel, which is now radioactive, they would bring it in and this was a research facility. They wanted to see what it looked like, what physically happened to it while it was in the reactor. And it is, was very radioactive, so you need to protect the worker. So we have time distance or shielding. This is shielding. The walls are 39 inch thick, high density concrete. The window is made of 34 layers of leaded glass stacked together, 39 inches thick there as well, with mineral oil in between the layers. That provided the radiation shielding, so the operator here could use these manipulator arms to handle the, the material inside. And my only talent in life, I can prove there are 34 layers of glass because I have the flashlight app. And we put that in front of the window you see 34 layer or 34 reflections from the layers of glass, and that's how they can handle it safely. So Don, why is EBR1 so special? I would say it's special, number one, because it's in Idaho. I think that's pretty cool. But to me, it's everything they set out to do, they achieved. They wanted to prove they could use a reactor to make electricity over extended periods. They did it. They wanted to prove they could make more nuclear fuel than they used. They did that. And everything that was learned here just led to bigger and bigger things. And now 20% of the electricity for the United States comes from nuclear. For the world, it's 16, 17%, I think now. That all was born right here. This was the birthplace of nuclear power. To me, that is very special. You can learn more about EBR1 and nuclear energy on the Science Trek website. When you're there, be sure to check out my science blog for kids and connect to our Facebook page for teachers and parents. You'll find it all at idahoptv.org slash science trek. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Science Trek.